Hello, good morning, good evening, and good afternoon to everyone joining today's Ask WHO session. On Monday, we are marking World Neglected Tropical Diseases Day. So today, our guests are answering questions about neglected to tropical diseases. So if you're watching us on Facebook, please use the comment section as usual to send us your questions. And if you're watching us on Twitter, please use the hashtag AskWHO. I am very pleased to be joined by Dr. Ibrahima Sosafol who is director of our global neglectical, ne oops, sorry, neglectical, uh, trop neglected tropical diseases director. Good afternoon, Dr. Sase. Good afternoon. Nice to see you here. Thank you. Good to be here. And we also have special guests who is a member of WHO Youth Council that met for the first time today, uh, Alistair Mukon Mukondiva, uh, who is a representative of Youth Combating NTDs. Good afternoon, and thank you for being with us. It's a pleasure being here. Thank you. Thank you. Maybe I will go first to Dr. Sosse to tell us about your work and experience on neglected, neglected tropical diseases. Uh, thank you, Alex. Uh, actually, I started public health more than 30 years ago doing neglected tropical diseases because I specialize in tropical diseases from the French Army Institute of Tropical Medicine, 94, 95. And, uh, and I went back to Senegal. I was deployed to a very remote area to manage endemic disease, but also outbreaks because at that time everything was very integrated. And so that's why I got the passion for negative tropical diseases. Thank you so much, Dr. Sosa. We are happy to have your rich experience now um, supporting the whole world. Um, and Alistair, can you tell us a bit about your interest and experience in NTD world? Okay, um, so my name is Alistair. I come from Zimbabwe and I'm a junior doctor. So my experience with, med with tr neg neglected tropical diseases stems from my childhood. Um, I grew up in, a, in the oldest city in Zimbabwe where it was not uncommon to walk down the street and see uh, lymphatic filariasis. And we had no n local language names for it that were polite. Um, people were labeled witches, people were labeled all sorts of names. And it was something that became a burden even as I went through medical school because these were diseases that we're see we were seeing in communities, but at the same time, we're not even receiving as much education about them as they should have gotten. So that's how I got involved in neglected tropical diseases. And right now I'm serving as an advisory board member for the Youth Combating Neglected Tropical Diseases, where we work with young people around the world who are working against neglected tropical diseases. And currently we have a presence in 45 countries and we have about a network of 800 youth champions that are working on this. Thank so, you. Yeah. And how this idea for youth to gather and work on this issue uh, happened? Um, I think it stems just from the fact that we have 1.7 billion people around the world who are at risk for neglected tropical diseases and 1 billion of them are children. Um, so this is a very pertinent issue with the young people's demographic, particularly, and also we really want to harness um, the young people's energy, drive and talent as we try to end neglected tropical diseases by 2030, according to the WHO roadmap. So this is how the idea came along and that's what we've been working on. Thank you so much. Yeah. And maybe, Dr. Sosa, you can actually explain to our viewers, for those who are not familiar, what are neglected tropical diseases? I think this is a very important question because when we talk about neglected tropical diseases, we are talking about uh, more than 20 different diseases or group of diseases classified by WHO as neglected. And, um, so these diseases can be caused by parasites, by bacteria or, or fungi even. So, on, uh, they're called neglected because if you look at the history in terms of treatment, in terms of diagnosis, vaccine, you have very limited tool. And uh, we are making a lot of effort now to have more tools, but this disease has been neglected. The people affected neglected, and uh, this that really affecting the most poor and, uh, you know, difficult to access population. And, uh, this is really having a huge impact in terms of health, social life, in terms of economic development in general. So without investing in this neglected tropical diseases, we'll be very hard to talk about development at all, or health system development. And uh, Dr. Sosa, why are those diseases being neglected? Um, you know, if you just look at the recent history, when you have diseases affected 
poor population living in remote area. Almost nobody will invest on those diseases. Look at Ebola. When it started reaching, you know, rich countries in Europe, America, everybody stood up to, to, to invest into Ebola vaccine, Ebola treatment. And now we have two vaccines, we have treatments. The same recently with monkeypox. Monkeypox was endemic in many African countries. And uh, nobody was investing on monkeypox. But when the outbreak started in Europe, in the US, you have seen this global movement to, to uh, tackle monkeypox. So this is neglected because affecting poor people who have no voice into the global health priorities. And this is something we need to change together in t because of equity, because of human right and the right to health. Thank you so much, Dr. Sosa. And maybe, Alistair, what are the key achievements of the youth movement to raise awareness on neglected tropical diseases? I think one of the most important things that the youth movement has started doing is um, centralizing and mainstreaming the issue of neglected tropical diseases. As Dr. Sose was saying, uh, neglected tropical diseases, at the core of them are diseases of neglected people. Um, it's about the people who are being affected by these diseases. And once the youth took a hold of this issue, we started profiling it more. And what we've managed to do over the last three, four years is we've managed to hold youth consultations and get the Kigali Declaration signed. Um, the Kigali Declaration is a political commitment um, by a number of countries and a number of um, non-state actors to work towards the elimination and the ending of neglected tropical diseases by 2030. But beyond that, what we're doing is we've created a movement that is very vibrant of young people who are paying attention to these diseases in local languages, giving these diseases names from that aspect, um, taking initiatives in terms of curbing the transmissions, um, that is um, water and hygiene and sanitation programs and the like. And what we're doing is we're training these young people, we're networking these young people, and we're getting them to actually accelerate some of the goals that we have with the 2030 roadmap um, by the WHO. So those are some of the achievements that we've been having um, amongst the youth movement against um, neglected tropical diseases. Thank you so much. And Dr. Sosse, maybe you can, you can tell the viewers more, what are the targets to be achieved by 2030? I think this is a, a, a very important question, and we have what we call the, the WHO roadmap for 2030. You know, having specific target for you know specific diseases because, uh, as I was saying, we are talking about uh, 20 diseases and disease groups. So we have specific targets in terms of elimination. You know, for example, Guinea worm is one example of disease we want to eradicate. And uh, we are close to eradication, but we still have a lot of effort uh, in terms of uh, access to some of the most difficult areas. We have specific targets in terms of number of people needing treatment to be reduced. We have targets in terms of coverage of intervention. And these are all, you know, what we need to do together to fill the gaps in terms of access to medicine, access to intervention and also access to preventive measures to make sure that we can have bigger impact. Thank you, Dr. Sosse. And is it possible to eliminate and eradicate neglected tropical diseases? Yes, yeah, possible. If you, I was referring to Guinea worm, if you go back to, you know, some years ago, before the eradication program, we were reporting more than 3.6 million cases a year. Now we are talking about 13 cases, you know, last year. So it shows that we can educate Guinea home, and, uh, but we need a lot of effort because even when you reach this low level to maintain it and to go further to stop transmission, it requires a lot of resources. And we have other diseases we target for elimination as public health problems. So when we reach this control phase, we need now to move to elimination and eradication. And this is still a lot of investment, but uh, I think this is worth it because in terms of quality of life, in terms of social equity and, uh, you know, economic development for these rural and, you know, remote areas, this is really important. Thank you so much, Dr. Sosse. And um, here is um, a question from Chide Bube Alaka asking if leprosy is a neglected tropical disease. Yeah, leprosy is a neglected tropical disease. So when we talk about leprosy, many people think that it's an old disease. The same when we talk about plague. Plague is not a neglected tropical disease, but it's still happening in some countries. So last year, I think we reported around 100, 140 
thousand cases of leprosy, showing that we are still far from elimination. But our goal as a community is to move to zero leprosy. So we are targeting to eliminate leprosy. Thank you, Dr. Sasse. And you mentioned as well uh, there are a lot, we need a lot of resources to stop transmission of neglected tropical diseases. So some of our viewers are, are asking how actually neglected tropical diseases are transmitted. Okay, no, important question because there are very different diseases. Some are transmitted, you know, by bacteria, others by parasite, and other fungi. And we have different ways of transmission. We can talk about vector-borne diseases. Some of them are transmitted by vector. You know, they can be, you know, insect or other type of, uh, you know, vector. So. And that's why it's very important to have an integrated approach, for example, to for vector-borne diseases. And we have at least eight of them transmitted by a vector. We have also waterborne diseases. People without access to safe water are getting sick, you know, affected by neglected tropical diseases. We have also food transmission diseases among the neglected tropical diseases. And uh, with the uh, ongoing climate change, we even see more, you know, this is happening. We will see, you know, an increase in terms of incidence for many of them. That's why having an integrated approach when we talk about, you know, health security and talk about universal health coverage, climate change, you know, one health zoonotic disease, and many of them, most of them are zoonotic diseases transmitted from animal. We really need an integrated approach where investment using all the channel can also address the neglected tropical diseases. Thank you so much, Dr. Sosa. And we were talking about uh, ne people who are neglected, um, poor people, vulnerable, vulnerable people that are mostly affected. But can we maybe specify, are there age groups? Is it elderly? Is it children? Is it um, what? Wh who is often uh, getting sick with those diseases? Okay, important question. Uh, depending on the diseases, you, have, you can have different age groups affected. For example, if you talk about soil transmitted ailment charges, we have 900 million children, you know, at risk and 500 women at risk. And uh, you can see that this is a big priority we, we need to address. When you talk about cystosomiasis, you know, all people using, you know, the river water, you know, for bath and for anything else are, are, are also at risk. And it's both children, women and, uh, and, 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 and boys. And uh, so if you talk about some diseases like dengue on uh, chikungunya, these are, you know, what we call arboviruses transmitted by mosquitoes. They affect the entire population. But uh, clearly people who are, you know, the poorest, who are the, most, are the most vulnerable because of the low level of immunity. So in certain areas, you know, the entire population is at risk and we need to take it into consideration. The main factor here is really the level of poverty, access to sanitation, safe water, to, you know, decent housing. So you can see that it's not only a matter of age group. Thank you so much. And Alistair, do you maybe have uh, some patients involved as well in your group? Okay. So I think one of the core things that we have tried to prioritize, particularly in the youth movement, um, and particularly in also youth combating neglected tropical diseases is putting at the center of our stories um, and putting at the center of our work people with lived experiences. And one of the things that is there is that there are actual stories within the communities that we have managed to gather up that are there that we try to profile. We've got a storytelling, a global storytelling festival that we have where we profile experiences of people with neglected tropical diseases or young people who've taken care of people with neglected tropical diseases. So at the core of it is really something that is dr driven by people who who have lived experiences with this because that's one strong thing that we feel sometimes is lacking because um, the neglected tropical diseases sometimes are viewed as a purely scientific subject because they affect a very distinct set of countries, a very distinct set of people around the world. And what we want to do is to profile their stories. People must know that these are real diseases affecting a very huge chunk of the world and maybe that can increase and drive up the focus and transition them from being issues that are neglected. So, yes, that is very central to our um, agenda. Maybe coming back more specifically to the roadmap target, you know, for 2030. 
in terms of intervention, you want to reduce by 90% the number of people requiring intervention for NTDs. So, and in terms of uh, daily, you know, the target is to reduce by 75% the NTD-related daily disability adjusted life years. And uh, 100 countries achieving elimination of at least one NTD. And we have already recorded 47 countries, you know, that have at least eliminated one entity. I think this is a good progress. And in, in terms of eradication, still for 2030, we are targeting eradication of drug conculus, this is guinea worm, and yours as well. There are two diseases targeted for eradication. Thank you so much, Dr. Sosa. And speaking of people who have lived experiences and, and, and patients, uh, are entities curable? Um, or, uh, as you said, some people, our target is to reduce daily disability from, from uh, some people? Um, uh, most of the NTDs are curable, but it's important to have early detection, early diagnosis, and to be able to provide treatment before, you know, we have all the complication and disability. I think this is an important aspect. So this will require a lot of uh, community engagement, a lot of health promotion to be able to do that. And uh, we have treatment for, 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 for most of them. But at the same time, we don't have vaccine, for example, because we are not investing on vaccine. And uh, for some of them, we need to improve the diagnostic tools. That's why we are working with our partner in the private sector to develop new products. So this is really important. Even if, you know, they're curable, if you don't have early diagnostic, rapid detection and rapid treatment, we still have the complication and risk of death and disability. Thank you, Dr. Sosa. And maybe, Alistair, I, I, I hear you noting yes. when it comes to this call to investment for vaccine development and tools. So is your group doing anything on, on that segment? Yes. Um, so one of the, the earliest things that we, we started experiencing when we started working on um, growing this movement was that we realized that there's a need for strong high-level advocacy. So we actually engaged over six countries in Africa after the withdrawal of funding by the UK government, which was focused on neglected tropical diseases, because this was funding that was going largely into the mitigation and the early detection that Dr. Sosa was talking about. And these are areas of neglect that are actually very palpable because with neglected tropical diseases, we're seeing neglect in research, re neglecting policy making, and re neglect even in financial willpower. So for sustainable reduction, as many countries have shown significant progress in eliminating um, neglected tropical diseases, for su sustainable ending of ne neglected tropical diseases, there needs to be a prolonged good partnership um, amongst governments, um, both the donor governments and the, the countries that need um, um, support, which are the endemic countries. And beyond that, there needs to be strengthening of public health systems across the board. So these are all things that need to be incorporated. And we have been doing a lot of work engaging the governments um, on high-level advocacy and also trying to get the youth to the table, getting the stories that we were speaking of earlier to the table and profiling those. So, yes. Thank you so much. And I think next time we should bring some of those stories here to exactly. the studio. That would uh, be incredible. Of course. <laughs> and speaking about this lack of investment mm -hmm. uh, and uh, lack of support from international community, Dr. Sosa, we are in the fourth year of the pandemic and you have been working closely on, on, on that response. So how has the pandemic impacted our work to beat neglected tropical diseases? Yeah, important question. I think based on uh, all the survey we have done in WHO, the NTDs program are among the most affected by the pandemic in terms of disruption. So it was very difficult for patients to get access to diagnosis and treatment. And uh, our supply chain system was also disrupted, not only at international level, but even at local level to get to the last miles because uh, of restriction of movement and lockdown and so on. In terms of surveillance also for the disease we are targeting for elimination and eradication, surveillance system was completely disrupted. And uh, overall, we have, in terms of, you know, reduction of access to, to intervention around 34% of intervention were disrupted. And now we are having a kind of 
early recovery because we have seen an increase of 11% of activity, but it's still not enough. We need a lot of investment to recover from the COVID-19 impact. Thank you so much. Would you like to add? Yeah, I, I think the only thing I'd add is for any person who grew up in a place where um, neglected tropical diseases were endemic, you would re remember that uh, mass drug administrations are the main, uh, one of the main ways of preventing um, neglected tropical diseases. And this was something that was severely curtailed um, by the pandemic. People could not gather. Um, public uh, primary healthcare systems did not function as they used to. So we have a huge gap that exists even on, on the ground on a continual continuation of the immunization programs. Yeah. Thank you so much. And we have a question from one of the viewers who is asking, what about leptospirosis? Is this disease underreported by countries? Um, uh, so leptospirosis is not among the neglected tropical diseases, but uh, this is really underreported because, you know, in many countries when they see fever in many tropical countries, the first thing they think about is malaria. If they don't have, you know, diagnostic you know, tools to confirm malaria or something else, they will go for malaria. So this is really underreported. And uh, last year we had an outbreak of leptospirosis in Tanzania, so we had to address this under the emergency program. So this is happening, but we need more information, more research to know the real burden of leptospirosis in our countries. Thank you so much, Dr. Sosa. And um, you were talking about our roadmap, um, but we are also having a new progress report to be launched. Uh, so can you maybe tell us what are the key successes and challenges toward uh, controlling and eliminating neglected tropical diseases? Um, uh, so despite the COVID impact, we have some success stories. I mentioned earlier that we have already 47 countries reporting, you know, or where we have confirmed the elimination of at least one uh, NTD. This is an important progress. And, um, in terms of uh, access to new tools, also, we are working, you know, with many partners and we have 16 new products, you know, developed in collaboration with WHO. We have the resumption of activities, mass treatment and others. We have seen disrupted during the COVID-19 pandemic, but we still have many challenges and we need to, to in addition to the report, we are working on, you know, what we call the gap analysis in terms of intervention and funding to be able to mobilize the entire community at global, local level for more investment. I think this is really important right now. Yeah. Thank you so much, Dr. Sose. Mm -hmm. And as I said at the beginning, Monday is World Neglected Tropical Diseases Day. So why are we marking this day? That thing is important to, to celebrate, as we call them neglected tropical diseases. Having a world day to celebrate um, is extremely important to mobilize community, to mobilize partners, to really prioritize the NTDs while we are talking about the global architecture for, you know, for public health. It's really important to make sure that NTDs are a strong pillar because uh, we cannot have health security without addressing NTDs. We cannot, you know, achieve universal health coverage without uh, tackling NTDs because we have 1.7 billion people at risk, as just mentioned by Alistair. So there is no way we can have, you know, universal health coverage or health security without NTDs. And with the climate change also, the risk is high to see, you know, this disease increasing in terms of incidence and prevalence. So making sure that uh, we prioritize them when we plan at global level, but also making sure that we have domestic investment in all countries is um, extremely important. So we are using the word anti death to mobilize more partners to advocate and to, you know, educate the public on NTDs, but we shouldn't stop at the word NTDs. We need to take it as a booster to start talking more about the NTDs. Thank you so much, Dr. Sose Thank and you. Alistair. How will youth combating NTDs mark the day on Monday? So the day on Monday is a day that we're really looking forward to. Um, 
So we'll be working under the theme that's being cel celebrated around the world. That's act now, act together, invest in NTDs. Um, so what we'll be doing is we'll also we'll be sharing a social media kit, which will um, have information around in neglected tropical diseases. Additionally, we also will be supporting the um, the the webinar that's taking place on the 30th of January um, in the afternoon at Central European time, um, which will feature um, Uniting Combating NTDs and the WHO. We'll have a special address from Dr. Tedros um, and we'll be just communicating on the progress and the work that's being done in the NTDs community and trying to make sure that we foster collaboration and investment in NTDs over the next few years. Yeah. Thank you, Alistair. And what is the message to the world from you? How to help? I think there's no health without neglected tropical uh, diseases being addressed. And I think this is one thing that we need to take urgent action towards. So, yes. Thank you so much. And Dr. Sosta, maybe the last words to you. How can our viewers help us? Um, thank you, Alex. So I'm calling on everybody, not only people working on public health or health expert, but we need the entire population, the entire world to come together to address the NTDs. And as we can see on the team, we urge everybody um, to act now, to act together and to invest in NTDs. This is my last call. Thank you so much, Dr. Sosa. And I thank you all our viewers from around the world who have been watching us today. Before I close, I want to remind you that you can check on all materials and content and messages on neglectedtropicaldiseases.day. This is a new domain that will be easier for users around the world to access. So please uh, check our webpage, but also follow our social media channels. Also, Dr. Sosa, Alistair, and Combat Youth, and uh, you will be able to, to get more information about these diseases and how you can help. Thank you so much and goodbye. TD community are working towards one goal, a world free of neglected tropical diseases. The launch of the new NTD roadmap for 2021 to 2030 was a turning point, but a changing funding landscape and unpredictable international context have led to challenges. NTDs continue to disproportionately affect the poorest members of the world community. 16 countries bear 80% of the global NTD burden. However, the number of people requiring NTD interventions has decreased by 25% over the last decade, falling by 80 million people between 2020 and 2021. More than 1 billion people were treated each year between 2016 and 2019, and as of December 2022, 47 countries had eliminated at least one NTD. But COVID-19 took a toll on community-based interventions and on people's ability to access health facilities. As a result, the number of people treated for NTDs fell by 34% between 2019 and 2020, before rebounding again in 2021. In 2022, WHO published 52 guidelines, tools and other information products to help the global NTD community. It continued to evaluate and approve new medicines to treat these debilitating and deadly conditions, working to ensure equity and human rights in NTD interventions. WHO works with countries to help put in place the actions and frameworks that will benefit their people. WHO wants NTD treatments to be sustainable, and is working with partners and donors to ensure this, building global collectives and platforms for advocacy. The last few years have been challenging for the global NTD community. Now, we need to reverse the delays and look to the future. We must invest in innovative operations and financing solutions that foster integration and cross-sectoral collaboration. We must boost global support for countries with the highest NTD burdens. And we must continue to facilitate country ownership and the sustainability of NTD programs through new approaches to financing and implementation. Together, we can foster sustainable interventions that will allow us to reach our 2030 goal of a world free of NTDs.